We're about to watch Tesla's self-driving AI attempt the impossible. Seven roundabouts in one. The infamous magic roundabout in Swindon, which is of course proudly part of the United Kingdom. And what other place also fits that description that's even more of a nightmare to drive? Maybe the most congested city in the world, with 156 hours lost to traffic per driver every year? Well, don't make me spell it out for you, mate. A self-driving car couldn't possibly survive driving through rush hour traffic in the busiest parts of London, could it? This is official Tesla footage, slowed down, enhanced and analyzed by May. The latest version of FSD supervised can be initiated by holding a single button on your screen after setting your navigation route. The car then takes care of everything while you have to pay attention and be ready to take over. Will it be necessary during this ride? Let's find out. Since this is a right-hand drive country, this version of FSD surely must be tuned to address that reality. And sure enough, we've also seen it perform well in Sydney and Melbourne, proving the generalized approach Tesla is going for is working out for them so far. A few pedestrians and cyclists are handled smoothly, but now the vehicle encounters roadworks marked by orange cones and has to navigate a tightly constricted path. It correctly doesn't proceed through the intersection until it's clear, then asserts itself by nosing in just enough to signal intent. It's being fairly assertive here already, as one has to be in the most congested city in the world. This roadwork maze is a critical test of real-time spatial awareness and dynamic path planning. These cones are not on a map. The system must perceive them as unexpected, temporary lane boundary. This proves FSD's ability to adapt to unexpected road changes no matter where they are. It appears to be a truly intelligent, complex self-driving solution, ready for deployment. Despite the visual confusion, Tesla showcases smooth, non-jerky speed control and an efficient follow distance maintaining a consistent speed. Now we've truly entered the local traffic flow, with a giant double-decker bus blocking a significant amount of our visual field. This is one of the icons of London, and there's more than 8,000 of them driving around. As soon as it's safe, we smoothly change lanes to continue forward at the next intersection. There's so many cyclists in London that you wouldn't believe. In fact, over 1.2 million cycle journeys take place every day, which is up 50% from a mere decade ago. I've visited this place myself a few months ago, and I've got to tell you, it's hard to make sure you don't get run over. Not by a double-decker, not by a black cab, by a crazy person on a bicycle. Every junction here is basically a Tour de France sprint finish. Now, we're driving next to the famous River Thames, which means we're going to reach the busiest, most touristy spots real soon. So definitely keep watching and let me know if you'd have the balls to drive through here. Or better yet, let your car drive you around. Putting some mild pressure on this gentleman in their BMW, but still leaving enough space for him to squeeze through and continuing with the sightseeing tour. We're gliding along Albert Embankment, the Thames a murky spectator to our left, but you can see the famous Lambeth Bridge peeking through the trees. If you pay attention closely, you might even get a glimpse of Westminster or Parliament buildings, which we're heading towards. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm really impressed by how the car is doing so far, with the most dramatic part of the video still ahead of us. If you're blown away as well, tap the like button gently to confirm and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Hopefully in my own car soon enough, if we can finally get FSD approved in Europe.
Just a quick reminder that this is still just an official test conducted by a Tesla employee. And now, the main course. As we're heading towards Westminster Bridge, traffic is heating up and the Tesla cheekily takes advantage of a dedicated bus lane to overtake everyone around and get in front. A bold move, except those lanes are camera enforced 24-7. And finally, after dodging dozens of double-deckers, we find ourselves on our way to the tourist highlight of this drive, through the Westminster Bridge, behind a traditional London black cab nonetheless. And here it is. Big Ben, Westminster Abbey, and the busiest intersection FSD has ever seen. Look at the sheer number of people outside and on the screen. It's a small miracle that the car is able to accurately map all of this and here come the cyclists. It's pretty hard to see them on the video because of how fast they are, even though I did my best to slow it down. I encourage you to pay attention to the car's visualization, which remains remarkably stable even though it's just a small part of everything the car really perceives and plans for. We're deep in the most touristy part of the city right now, with two double-deckers currently flanking us before we can continue on our way to escape. If you appreciate my work, consider liking the video or becoming a channel member. Remember that members are treated like royalty, including an early access to this very video. Now, let's say hi to another black cab before we dive onto Birdcage Walk. This stretch is a complete contrast to the chaos we just escaped, but not without its own challenges. The dense tree canopy along St. James Park can make life harder for the cameras and neural nets. Lighting shifts, cyclists cutting through from the park and the occasional horse parade heading to Buckingham Palace all keep this section more unpredictable than it first looks. Did you just see that cyclist throwing themselves in front of our car? Case in point. Now look, there's the Queen Victoria Memorial in front of the Buckingham Palace. The traffic here is again not guided merely by lanes and signs but temporary obstructions too. I hope the car hasn't done anything improper in front of the palace here. But if it did, Hopefully, Tesla already paid that fine because I'm definitely not earning enough through YouTube just yet to afford driving like this. You can help me change that though by becoming a robot insider, earning you not just early access to all new videos, but a few cheeky new emojis and a badge of honor next to your name. Quite the deal if I do say so myself. Now bask in the glory of all these Union Jacks as we're led away from the palace by the Mall, London's ceremonial red carpet, designed for royal parades, but somehow still open to everyday traffic. It's one of the city's rare straight wide avenues, yet the sheer number of tourists spilling in from St. James Park and spontaneous event closures mean it's never as straightforward as it looks. And just like that, the royal red carpet dumps us into the mall gallery's underpass. Basically a concrete throat that bottlenecks every car heading to Trafalgar Square. Three lanes squeeze into two, traffic from Pormore cuts in, and suddenly your majestic parade exit turns into a crawl through a Cold War looking cave. And here we emerge into Trafalgar Square, construction barriers for what feels like the 10th time today because London never misses a chance to dig up its own roads. This roundabout is basically Britain's chaos theory in action. Four major avenues, a swarm of tourists, cyclists cutting diagonally and red buses lunging from every angle. It's meant to be a national meeting point, but right now it's busier than Mumbai at rush hour. Buses absolutely wedged in, pedestrians darting between bumpers and every driver leaning on the horn like it's a national sport. Swinging right here drops us straight back toward Big Ben if we survive the next 30 seconds. The lads on two wheels make it a bit hairy trying to merge left here, which is a proper fuff, seeing as we need to turn left almost immediately. 
The Tesla does the only thing it can. Half commits, straddles two lanes like a confused tourist, and annoys absolutely everyone behind us. Hardly ideal, but then neither are London driving conditions, let's be honest. Eventually, we wriggle through and end up chasing yet more cyclists along a slightly calmer stretch. To be fair, London's given them proper kit. In some spots, they've got more space than the cars. Oh, and horses. Always horses. And somehow, there's always room for yet another black cab. Fun fact, even though they still retain their vintage look, most of them are now electrified as well. London actually runs the world's biggest ultra-low emission zone 24-7 across every borough drive anything that's not at least Euro 4 petrol or Euro 6 diesel and you pay 12 and a half pounds a day. What do you think? Is this one of those good regulations or just another annoying piece of bureaucracy? Speaking of bureaucracy, one year ago when I started making these videos, I thought that FSD in Europe was merely months away. Instead, we find ourselves in the second half of 2025 with no high hopes in sight. We might get something in late September, but that release might be limited to highways only. All eyes are on the end of the year again, and for us in the Czech Republic, the 1st of January 2026. It's super frustrating to see the timeline stretch like that. And the best thing we can do to hurry it up is spread awareness by sharing how well FSD actually performs. Hopefully, I've made that easy for you. All you have to do is show videos like this one to your friends and maybe even email them to your local politicians, voicing your opinion on the deregulation of life-saving technology. Now check out how FSD pulls over entirely on its own and even attempts parallel parking in front of the 5 star Corinthia Hotel. As you can see from the example of the black cab right in front of us, we're a bit too far from the curb but otherwise an honourable finish after such a wild ride. And now, the moment you've been all waiting for. The self-driving robot versus the magic roundabout. On paper, the rules are simple. Just follow the arrows to your desired destination while making sure to yield to everyone who beats you to the roundabout. Only this is technically seven roundabouts in one, five if we're being conservative. This first run makes it look easy. We've already slowly and cautiously made our way to the inner central roundabout and now it's only about finding the right path to Brexit. Tesla correctly yields without unnecessary stopping and confidently speeds up while exiting the last roundabout. Right, so here's a bit of a conspiracy theory for ya. Even though Swindon is well over two hours from London, I reckon this is the very same Tesla chap we spotted earlier. Why, you ask? Well, let me spill the tea after our second run. This time, the entry is luckily almost completely empty, letting us judge how FSD understands this madness in sandbox mode. It stays slow and cautious when the plot thickens and shows amazing reasoning and planning capability by not entering the next roundabout, even though it could because it knows that would potentially block other incoming cars. Super smart if you ask me. It only continues forward after the roundabout's clear to go. Now, why is this the same Tesla employee as before? Look at their left hand. They're sporting the same silver watch band, probably with a chunky Apple watch on it. Could just be a fluke, mind, but I reckon we're onto something here. What do you make of it, eh? Let me know in the comment section, and while you're at it, do you give me a like already? Well, maybe after we finish our third round here. This is by far the busiest entry yet, with tons of road users going around. But the car makes way by assertively signalling its intention by smoothly driving at a low speed at all times, and never stopping, even when it's yielding. Just like a seasoned bloke who's done this a thousand times would. I mean, it's technically done it more times than that. Only thing that makes it nervous is a fat car literally blocking the exit. Its front wheel literally on the line and rear wheel even beyond. Now while this was a piece of cake, the ultimate challenge is ahead of us now. 
Click here to teleport yourself and the autonomous Tesla to the ancient capital of civilization and experience true medieval torture through the eyes of full self-driving.